Hello everyone, I'm Justin, and for today's video, we're going to the maid cafe. Akihabara, a magical world where the anime culture is visible anywhere you walk. And there is nothing more essential to the otaku culture than the well-known maid cafes. Places where cute girls dressed as maids serve you overpriced meals while giving you a moe moe kyun and calling it a day. Maybe, if you're lucky, you will get to see a performance. Or if you're in this anime, maybe you will get gone down by the maids. Wait, what? Yeah, for today's video, I want to talk about an incredibly good 2022 original anime called Akiva Maid Wars. But, before we talk about the anime, I want to give a fair warning that there will be major spoilers ahead about the first episode, the plot, as well as the ending of the anime so please take that in consideration. And with that said, let's move on with the video. Akiva Made War has to be one of the most unexpected animes to come out in 2022. Coming into this anime, I knew nothing. I only read a brief synopsis about how the anime was set in 1999, and it would focus on a young girl joining a maid cafe. The key visual also gave me nothing, only a bunch of girls and, weirdly enough, a panda. Before watching it, I was expecting it to be a slice of life showing the typical depictions of maid cafes, nothing new or special. But oh boy, I was completely wrong about that. <laughs> For those who don't know, this anime is basically an homage to the old Yakuza dramas, visualized in the perspectives of maids as Yakuza's. But before we go too deep, let me just start this by saying that my knowledge of Yakuza shows is basically non-existent. I know a few things about it, like sharing sake for the same cup makes you brothers, and if you want to leave the organization, you need to give a pinky or something like that. But that's basically it. So a lot of these things are new to me, but nonetheless, I found it extremely enjoyable. So, the story focuses on Nagomi a young girl who just arrived to Akiva and wants to become a maid. She decides to join the big team Tontokoton Maid Cafe. Alongside her joins a 35-year-old mysterious woman called Ranko. Early into the episode, we realize that this is not a slice of life anime, as we have a visit from a guy dressed as a hardcore otaku who belongs to the parent organization of the maid cafe, called Creature Land and is demanding payment for a debt. As this is a rundown cafe with almost no clients, they are unable to pay the debt. So instead, they are given a task. The new girls need to deliver a letter to a cafe that belongs to a rival maid group called the Maidlians. And as soon as we go in, we start to realize, hey, maybe this is not a slice of life anime. The girls are threatened, and out of nowhere, Ranko kills a maid. As they escape, we get our first of many unexpectedly great moments in this anime, in a shutout scene combined with an idol performance that combines the best of Yakuza and Maid Cafe worlds. And that's how you make your first episode stand out. Later episodes, develop more into the story, revolving around the maids fighting against the rival maid cafes or even between their own organizations. All of this while maintaining a semblance of what a maid cafe anime should do. We also get new allies, with a Russian girl that joins later to the group. I like how during the first three episodes they were trying to hide her face in the opening, but you could still clearly see her silhouette and hair color. So as soon as she appeared on screen, we all knew she was going to join them at the end. Great idea, but bad execution. But talking about the opening. God, it's such a banger. Especially the first part of the opening. With the slowly building music and the use of typical maid cafe phrases to create the song, it was the perfect choice. The second half gets a bit more generic, and I get what they were trying to do by combining both Yakuza and Maid Cafe elements, 
and show the duality of both concepts. But I would rather have the first half go all the way. The anime touches on a lot of different topics that are common tropes in Yakuza dramas, but with a twist as they are trying to place this in a maid cafe world. We have the rival groups competing against each other and getting rid of the competition quite literally. The maid that just comes out of prison and expects to take a top spot in the organization, but it's mad with how the organization is acting. The girl trying to leave the organization with her lover but he never comes because he was killed. And of course, the two rival mates becoming sisters and drinking from the same ramen bowl. You could see the time and dedication that the script writers put into making this story and be consistent with how a real Jacko's story should be, but keeping the maid cafe teams. But they go above and beyond by still keeping it entertaining and understanding how nonsensical this must look like without context. I remember how in the first episode the girl walks into the cafe and is greeted by a panda. But why a panda? This is supposed to be a pig team made cafe, it makes no sense. And after the first unceremonial death, you knew that nothing was off the table. Any girl could die at any given moment. Well, anyone but the main girls of course, right? Now before we move forward, this is a final warning that will be spoiling the ending of the anime, so please take that in consideration. As the power struggle goes on, the Tontokoton Maid Cafe is driven into a corner by the leader of the Creature Land organization. They have been a nuisance for too long and they need to be taken care of. As a fight ensues, Ranko and Nagomi infiltrate into their headquarters, but are ambushed and end up making a peace agreement, saving everyone's lives. Except for the last maid that was shot after the cease of fire. Ah! Oh. That was really funny. But when everything looks okay, a surviving maid from the first episode massacre comes and kills Ranko, pushing the Creature Land leader to decide and finish off Tontokoton. In a last stand, the girls accept all the other maids as guests and give one last performance before their death, to which the leader of Creature Land accepts, but shooting Nagomi in the process. Nagomi gives an impassioned speech about how maids are meant to serve guests, not to fight each other, and as she finishes her performance, she is gone down by the leader of Creature Land, to which she gets shot by another maid and impaled by a bamboo from the panda, just for good measure. <laughs> Moving forward 19 years in the future, we see how Akiva has changed to the otaku heaven that it is today, and we see Tontokoton still thriving, with Nagomi still working as a maid on a wheelchair. I personally think that the ending was nearly perfect, except for one thing. There was honestly no good reason to keep Nagomi alive. You could have made her into a martyr and a legend for the other maids, but by keeping her alive, the ending lost its strength, as it was trying to give a happy ending rather than a great ending. It was my only real disappointment of the show. Overall, Akiva Made War is an incredible show, with a lot of thought put into the story and a perfect combination of action, drama and dark comedy. If you have any love for the Yakuza dramas and are looking for a banger show with a great story, Give Akiva Made Wars a try. I'm sure you will not regret it. And with that, we come to the conclusion of this anime review. What did you guys thought of Akiva Made War? Let me know in the comments below. Until then, see you guys next time.